In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant faithfulness to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's church, that they may avoid whatever is contrary to their confession and follow all such things as are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Jubilate is taken from Isaiah chapter 40. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2. Beloved, I urge you, as sojourners and exiles, to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia! He sent redemption to his people. Alleluia! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. John Wesley, when he was a young man, was sent to be a missionary to the Indians in Georgia. And on his way there across the Atlantic, the ship that he was traveling in went into a great storm. So great of a storm, in fact, that Wesley was afraid that he was going to die. And the vast majority of those on board with him also believed the same thing. But there were a group of Christians, of Moravians on board, who were acting very differently. Instead of fear, They were calm. Instead of giving way to panic, they were praying. And instead of voicing their fears, they were singing songs and psalms. And it was this kind of fearless joy that these Moravians expressed on that day that so impacted Wesley that it changed his life forever even before he had his great experience at Aldersgate. That kind of fearless joy which sees the world and yet knows that God is still with us in all things. And of course we see this also in the stories of the martyrs, those who gave their lives for Jesus, the sort of things that they suffered and yet they were calm even making jokes, going happily to the things that they suffered because they knew that the Lord Jesus Christ was with them always. So how do we find this kind of fearless joy, especially in a world which has been turned upside down? That's exactly the question, actually, that the disciples in our reading for today from the Gospel were trying to find. That's what the answer that they wanted. Because they were facing a very difficult situation. Jesus was going away. They knew that he was going away. But they didn't quite understand how. And so they were afraid. 
afraid of a future that they didn't understand, afraid of something they couldn't quite comprehend. And then on top of it, Jesus is saying things that they don't understand. What does he mean by a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? It doesn't make any sense. They're trying to figure out what to do, and especially in a world which seems to be against them. And how often, Christians, do we face a similar sort of fear, a joyless fear that is afraid of what the world might do to us, a joyless fear that is afraid of what might be. And think of it even in this time, the uncertainty that we face from the coronavirus, or more especially, from the reaction to the coronavirus, a world which has been turned upside down and made uncertain. How are we supposed to react? How are we supposed to find certainty in the face of this turmoil? And even more than this, what about those things that we face in our lives, those times when we're afraid that we might actually lose our lives? or lose something dear to us. How easy is it to just become fearful? Fearful of what could be. Fearful of the world. But Christians, listen to what Jesus says to his disciples. He says in verse 20, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. And he spoke those words to the disciples and telling them about what he was about to suffer, how he would go and be crucified. And after he had been crucified, he would be laid in the tomb. And when he was laid in that tomb, the world did rejoice, thinking that it had conquered God that it had stopped the things that God had promised would happen. And so, yes, they did have sorrow for a time, sorrow at losing the Lord Jesus Christ. But, Jesus says, you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. The joy of the world is fleeting. It's temporary. It will go away. But the joy which the Christ, which Christians know is a joy which will never go away. And Jesus uses the example here of a woman giving birth to a child. After she has given birth to that child, she no longer remembers the pain. She no longer remembers the suffering, but feels the joy of a child which has been born into the world. So also we, Christians, will feel that same joy, knowing that Jesus is with us always, that Jesus is the one who will see us again, because Jesus has risen on the third day. The grave could not hold him, and no one will take that joy from us, because Jesus is alive. Have you ever stopped to really think about what that means? Christians, about what it means for Jesus to be alive. It isn't just some little thing that we tell ourselves on Easter, a little tidbit about Jesus to remind us. This is the greatest life-changing truth we can know. Because Jesus is alive, it doesn't matter what the world throws at us. It doesn't matter the things that we might suffer. Jesus is alive and we too will live with him. Because think about all of the things which we undergo. Are you afraid of what the future might hold? Afraid of an uncertain finances and afraid of a world which has been turned upside down? Because we are in Jesus, we don't have to be afraid. We already know how everything will end. We already know the truth. Jesus is king over all things. And are we afraid of storms, either literal or metaphorical? 
times when we might lose our very lives. But you know what, Christians? That doesn't matter either. Because what's the very worst that could happen? We lose our lives, and then we are with Jesus. There's nothing that death can take away from us. There's nothing that we can suffer that will take us away from him. We belong to him, and he will be with us always. That was the great joy, that fearless joy, which the martyrs expressed. And we see that in the stories that we hear of them. I mean, take a few examples. You have Lawrence, for example, who was literally grilled alive, laid on top of a gridiron with a fire lit underneath him. And yet, in the midst of that terrible death, Lawrence could turn to his tormentors and say, turn me over and have a bite, this side's done. And he could make that joke. He could make light of the situation because he knew that Jesus is alive and that no matter what he suffered right now, he would soon be with him. Or you think of the, the 40 Roman soldiers who were martyred by being frozen to death at Sebast. How, when they heard what their death was going to be, ran to it, excitedly, even joyfully, singing songs, because they knew, Christians, that even if they had to suffer for a moment, that suffering would give way to joy, a joy which would know no end. And you think of a man like Tyndale, who was burned at the stake because of his faith, and how in the midst, of just before he died, he could pray calmly and collectedly, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. And he knew that regardless of what he suffered, he would soon be with Jesus, the living Lord who is King over all things. And that is the secret, Christians, the secret to a fearless joy is knowing that Jesus Christ lives, and because he lives, we will live with him too. And everything which we suffer in this life will compare to, will be nothing in comparison with the joys that await us in heaven. And as Paul says in Romans chapter 8, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation is going to be able to take us away from Jesus who is our living Lord. So Christians, rejoice. Jesus has broken the grave. Jesus lives this day. And he is very much alive, as alive as you and I are right now. And because he is alive, we will be with him forever. And we will live with him forever never to be separated from him again. He is alive, and he will bring us to himself, and our joy will know no end. Now to him, Jesus Christ, the crucified and resurrected Lord, be all glory, honor, and worship, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for John Claris, who is struggling with cancer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in mercy bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. 
Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger, and sustain with your spirit our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who experience persecution. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ, and help us to fight the good fight of faith, that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick, needy and unemployed, and the comforter of the distressed and those who sorrow. Look with mercy especially upon those who have requested our prayers, especially John, that they may ever cling to Jesus as their sure and certain hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you appoint rulers and officials for the sake of order and peace. Bless those whom you have placed in authority over us at the national, state, and local levels. Give to them the desire to serve with integrity and honor, and to work for the benefit of all. Protect them, give them health, and direct them wisely in their response to the ongoing pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no man can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.